Hey there! Today I'll be talking about what is app performance monitoring and how you can get started using Instabox tool. Monitoring app performance helps you take a proactive approach towards improving quality instead of just waiting for the worst case scenario such as a crash or an error to occur or even to hear negative feedback from your users. So that's why it's very important to track key metrics that affect the user experience such as the app launch, screen loading time, UI hangs and even the network timeout and issues that happen. And luckily, Instabook helps you track all of these key metrics from one place. So if you have a look at that, at the homepage I'm opening right now, you can find all of the metrics I just mentioned here in the app insights. You can also find one big number score called the overall app abdex. This number helps you track the performance of your overall application instead of keeping track of multiple metrics individually, which can be a hassle. This works by capturing all of the sessions that are happening on your mobile application and evaluating the session against targets that you set yourself for each key metric. And I will show you how to do that in just one second. We calculate the performance of each session and we show it in a number from 0 to 1. And the higher the number, the better you're performing. The performance is also reflected over time in this graph that you're seeing right here. This would be great if you're struggling in prioritizing your resources or in making decisions whether to work on a new feature or to focus on uh, making the app more stable. And you can also use filters to focus on a specific time frame or a time period that you have in mind or focus on the latest release that you just had. You can also look at each metric on its own to know what you need to start improving in your application. So to help you get started, you can start by setting targets for each metric that you have. So for example, you don't want your users to experience more than two seconds of app launch and you want this to be the standard. So what you do is that you click on the cold app launch. I have this open right here in another tab. And this is the cold app launch detail page that you would see. Right here, you can click on this in order to define the target that you set for yourself. So the threshold that you want, let's assume it's two seconds. Once you update it, you'd be able to um, analyze the app launch based on the expectations that you set for your users. You can use these graphs to pinpoint, to pinpoint if the current performance is meeting your expectations. If not, you can use a lot of contextual data to help you get to the root cause of any problem, whether it was something that's happening in your code, network, or even if it was relevant to a specific uh, attribute. And the, same concepts in, and the same concept in general applies to uh, the screens, or anything relevant to the screens, whether it was the screen loading time, whether it was UI hangs. So if you click, uh, you can use this toolbox right here in order to navigate between the metrics. So if you click on the screen loading time, it will take you to this page where we capture all the screens that um, you have in your application and we, uh, to help you monitor it. So if you click on a specific screen, you would be able to see very similar data. And even if we go back to the home page and click on the UI hangs from here, you would see all the UI hangs happening on each screen that you have in your application. And you'd be able to just go through all of that contextual data in order to debug where the issues are happening. And the same concept applies to network as well. But we understand that some metrics might not be that important for you to monitor. So that's why if you click on a specific metric from here, you can see these stars on the side for each metric. Uh, this lets you mark and unmark the most relevant APIs for you and your team. And you can even filter by it through the key metric and the non-key metric. And you, uh, you can also, you can customize your own URL patterns in order to custom have a custom URL pattern in mind. So if you go back and once you prioritize the APIs that you need to start working on, you can check all of the contextual data for that API in order to help you understand the root cause of the issues that are happening and whether they're having client side failures or server side failures. And lastly, if you have a specific API, uh, if you have a specific custom flow that you would like to monitor, you can create a custom flow in the execution traces by using a um, simple uh, start and end API that we provide, and it will provide you with all the data that you need to monitor that trace. 
And these are the contextual data that you can have a look at in order to debug that trace and to monitor it. We understand that with all the tasks that you have, you might not have the capacity to monitor the dashboard at all the time just from that page. So that's why we created the rules section and you can access rules through the settings right here. And then you click on the rules and then you'd create a rule. The rules section is uh, in rules. You can set your own alerts in order to be notified in Slack when a problem is about to occur. For example, you had a new release out and you would like to be alerted if there was a drop in performance. And we'll be touching on that in deeper details in our upcoming videos. But in general, this way, whether you're on your dashboard or off your dashboard, you're able to track the most important metrics, which represent the perceived quality of what the users are actually experiencing. So that's it for the video for today. Follow us for more tips and tricks and feel free to reach out if you have any questions.